This is the Medicine Lake Shield Volcano. We're at the northern flank. And it's pretty cool. cave here at Lava Beds and it is pretty awesome oh yeah and paint and the next ones we're gonna go are gonna be much more treacherous and this one you do have to bend down a little bit in some sections we're approaching our next cave it's called Sunshine Cave and currently there's two kinds of skylights just came from back there. Here's a little natural light pocket. It's pretty cool. site looks like or the campground so I'm just gonna do that real quick the sun is rising we're like way over there I'll show you here's our campsite there's where Cannon Grim Cannon's grandparents are staying right next to Emily and Dominic's house. We just took a morning walk and are taking a little break to play on the playground. We're on our way to breakfast. Oh, my fingers in it. That's a movie theater. It has two flo two floors to it, so one is what could be adult floor, could have drinks while uh, watching movies.
Dan and I decided to pull off on the side of the road because we're way ahead of schedule for the day. And the car's right there. And we're just gonna spend a little bit of time to enjoy this river. Probably pull our chairs out of the car and hang out for a little bit, but we just wanted to enjoy the scenery while we can. Got a little crossword. A nice drink. Cheers, babe. You know, they have really tall roofs. Uh, one of the novelties of these is they're completely passive in terms of cooling on them. So most greenhouses you have to cool, right? I mean, it's in the summertime, it's North Idaho, we, it's, it's not a Breakfast. It is 6:21 a.m. and the day the shuttle leaves at 7 for me, and I'll be gone until 8 p.m. Gannon gets a whole day to himself. <laughs> Fun, free time. I figure out what to do with myself. <laughs> yep. So that's where we're at right now. Okay, so I wanted to give a little bit of a voiceover for this section just because it's a bit of a longer video and I want to explain a little bit about what's going on and maybe fill you in a little bit. Um, I know that up to this point, the video has just kind of been a lot of little clips thrown together, so I hope that it's making sense at least a little bit. Um, but right now we're watching a special drone that... Um, the Idaho school owns. I was in Moscow, Idaho, for those of you that don't know at this point. I hope I've made it clear so far, but maybe not. But anyway, this um, drone has like a dangly thing on it, as you can see. And basically, that's just like a little saw at the end. Um, so this drone will primarily be used for research. Uh, and what they're doing right now is getting close to a tree to take a sample of one of the upper limbs. This was the guy's second time ever operating it with this attachment on it. Um, and so he's just taking a lot of time <laughs> to get in close and um, hopefully snap off a piece of or cut off a piece of that the branch. Um, and for the research purposes, basically this tops of the the branches and the twigs will be um brought back into the uh 
the lab and there's a special test that they do which they um, put the tree under pressure and then it like pulls out uh, air and, and water and it kind of like has this little bubbly thing at the end where it's been broken off. Um, I could give you much some more scientific explanation for it if I remember more but I only did it once in a lab um, a few years ago so I just remember it being bubbly and there being like little water and air bubbles that came out of the cut um, piece of the branch but um, this is really cool for like silvicultural research which is generally what uh, they were doing here um, to give a little bit more context the trees that you're seeing at this point are part of um, Idaho's experimental forest. And so this area that the drone's taking a snipping from is part of the area sectioned off for uh, research specifically. There are other parts of the forest where there is a student logging crew, which you'll see later. Um, they go ahead and, and harvest units and then they're able to sell it. So it was really cool. Uh, I hope this is kind of helping fill in a couple blanks, uh, especially with this. You'll see in a little bit um, when the twig bit drops off. Uh, hopefully you can catch it. It's just going to be in the very bottom of the screen. Um, but yeah, so we were able to see this really awesome drone. Uh, and then we also saw a couple other things this night that you'll see a little bit later. There was... Um, to give a little explanation for it before it comes up since I still have time <laughs> there was this simulation that you can um, get behind a virtual wheel of some of these like big pieces of machinery for timber harvesting so you'll see that and I think the next clip and then we also saw what's called a char boss um, and basically it takes like this woody biomass um, and you put it in there and then it burns it down real good and um, it spits out these hot coals and they get thrown into a watery pan. Um, and then at that point you can shovel it out and these bigger chunks of wood become little one inch blocks of mass. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, this was a great night after we looked at all these cool things. We had our the awards dinner and found out that next year this conference will be in West Virginia. Um, I hope you were able to find the little, see the little piece that fell off. Uh, there's the lady holding it, but you might have to go back and check real quick. But um, this next clip that I'm playing right now, we'll just show you them landing it, and maybe you can get a better idea on what the uh, what the head looks like. Oh, yeah, there's the little piece. So anyway, I uh, please keep watching, and uh, I hope you enjoy it so far, and you'll keep enjoying it as it goes on.
Chris, you want to talk a little bit about your, your guys' group? Uh, we've been doing this for about six years, seven. Time flies and you're off the bottom course. Uh, yeah, we started out small, just me, Chad, and one other guy. Hi, it's editing Kendra once again. Um, I just wanted to kind of explain what's happening in this video. Earlier, I mentioned that some of the forest is um, used for the student operations. So this video shows two different students operating two different types of equipment. Um, there's one right now that's on a four-track grapple skitter, pulling up logs or full trees um, to the processor and then um, the, the student in the, uh, the grapple skitter will go back out and collect some more trees. Um, prior to this video, the instructor actually hopped in a fowler buncher, okay, went out and cut down up. a few hey, trees for this demo. Be the pine. Um, so as you can see right here, right the student is pretty, pretty comparable to the professional that I showed earlier. Um, it, this is a really great experience for, for them. Um, on the processing the head, there are two different saws, one on each right end. Um, like there's Nelson also, like, it's computerized. There's a laser in there that gives you the diameter and the length of the log. Um, so there can do, be some preset, uh, like, lengths that they can choose to do. Um, the here the log that he's looking at and working on has a fork in it. And so that you, makes things more tour, interesting, and you can decide that he really doesn't want to deal with right? it. And then what's the point? Um, so we, you know, we're choosing throw it to off to the side um, and work on another one. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cool. Uh, it sounds beauty. like they have summer crews at work, and then also Rob throughout the school year they have some students on. I don't know a lot of the details, like but I do know that this is a great yeah. experience. Um, for students that want to get into operating machines in the future um, and they can get quite a bit of experience from this. And I think that they were saying that they must be like a few hundred hours of experience um, with the grapple skitter before the students can move on to this process. So so the student that's in here right now that we're watching um, has had quite a bit of experience and knows what he's doing. So this was a really cool experience to watch, and it was just really impressive to see students that are my age kind of in a similar spot as me, um, maybe with like less years in school, but still in a similar spot, kind of doing their own thing and getting this experience that otherwise they may not be able to have. So really cool to watch, and I hope that it can kind of be portrayed of over the video and or it's not too boring with videos. an 8 inch mob, we make more money on the 16.6. So we start to make a lot more firewood. So if you look as they're doing it, if you look at the on that firewood, that's our firewood deck. So they started learning that that was, that was profitable for us.
Ball's diameter, we can send the mill six inches. So that's where what, what they were talking about this morning about losing that, that uh, small diameter mill and plumber. You know, we could have went down to four inches. And now what ends up happening is we make we make more firewood. We don't put it in the brush pile as much as possible. 